That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about about endlessness. <laughs> the I believe it's the sixth uh, narrative feature from uh, the Swedish auteur Roy Anderson, uh, which initially premiered in competition at the 2019 Venice Film Festival, where he won Best Director for this work. Um, I saw it at TIFF. In 2019, and it is now being released courtesy of Magnolia, uh, April 30th, 2021. Uh, am, am I familiar with anything else he's done? No, you're not. Uh, okay. I, I don't think that starting out with this film for Roy Anderson is the best idea. However, I don't know under what circumstances I would ever have convinced you to um, visit his uh, oeuvre uh, in its entirety. And in fact, I think that much like he's spaced out his own work, you probably shouldn't watch everything in one sitting because uh, they might seem very similar. Uh, he's best known for his Living Trilogy, uh, starting with 2000's Songs from the Second Floor, which won uh, won the jury prize at Cannes. Uh, the follow-up, You the Living, which I think was 2007, uh, was an Un Certain Regard, and then he won the uh, coveted Golden Lion in 2014 for the final uh, chapter, A Pigeon Sits on a Branch Reflecting on Existence. Which actually is my favorite of all of those. This feels kind of like an addendum to those. Uh, trying to describe this film is... <clears throat> well, I guess it's easy. It's just a, a series of like little vignettes of sort of like ordinary settings, like a street corner a storefront inside of a super uh like, like a shopping center by the beach and watching people witness other people doing things basically like, like dancing or but i mean there are extremes like a man like striking a woman in a public space there's another man like carrying the cross down the street like jesus and being like beaten while everyone yells crucify um there's a scene where it appears someone killed someone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know what it all meant, uh, but... <laughs> I think that all of Anderson's films are kind of... Like, this is even this one is described as kaleidoscopic and about the splendor and banality of life. And I think this one leans a lot more into the banality. Um, but... And there's a narrator that we never see that starts out most of... or pipes up during most of these vignettes saying like, oh, I saw a man or oh, I saw a woman. Um, and then we're basically left to interpret that as we will. This film seems like it would be something I could have enjoyed <clears throat> if I were like in a museum for like a, like, like an installation, like a 30 minute experience where there are multiple screens playing each vignette simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And then maybe having a discussion over a glass of wine afterwards. Sure. But to sit through 80 some minutes back <clears throat> and just like sequentially viewing these random scenes, it, it wasn't an enjoyable experience, but, sure. and, and I don't think it was. I, I, I think Anderson's an acquired taste, um, but um, he's been described as somebody whose films feel like uh, po uh, poetry that's been put to cinema uh, arguably, uh, he, his influence um, by painters and arts is obvious, of course. Um, <clears throat> the couple floating in the beginning that it returns to, it's over war torn cologne. Uh, they are, that's a reference to a, a Chagall painting. Uh, he often, and has before, uh, kind of poked fun at Hitler. Um, at least he did in Pigeon, from what I recall. And there's a, there's a sequence where Hitler's in the bunker where People are closing in on him, um, and that's um, an homage to a painting by Kukrinsky, uh, much in the way that Peter Greenaway does. I will say, this is the second time I've seen this particular film, no. <clears throat> and while it's not my favorite uh, by far of his kind of limited narrative filmography, um, I will say, I when I saw it at TIFF, it was probably my third or fourth film of the day and I remember feeling kind of impatient with it like it's another Roy Anderson movie where I, I have to have this kind of reprieve of uh, stuff and then I didn't cover it because it's a kind of a film you have to really sit and think about if you want to but I found myself feeling a bit immersed in it this time it, uh, to me it was at the end of the day with some wine very relaxing uh, and it is brief um, 
there were some scenes that I really did like. I liked the scene where, um, and you'll notice a lot of them, a lot of the sequences are in long shots, like with a fixed camera, um, and there's some kind of special effects going on with some like miniatures and sets that I found interesting. It's a beautifully shot by uh, Gurgly Palos, who shot Pigeon. Um, Gurgly? I'm probably saying that name wrong. How That's an name? awesome name. <laughs> it's probably, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that name. It, th that Hungarian man. Uh, now my, you made me lose my train. Do you like the cinematography, other things you like? Um, you know, because it's you're stuck in this this very antiseptic world of these people and these colors. Um, oh, the the scene in where the man slaps the woman in the fish market or whatever. We're we're focused on like an old couple watching a man prepare this fish, and there's this really ugly fish that your eye goes to. Like I, I think that might be the fish because isn't Sweden known for having the stinkiest? You're the one that introduced me to that, that canned fish that's so stinky. Yeah, but I'm not sure that is the fish. But <laughs> Anyway, you're kind of focused on that, and there's this really old, decrepit old lady, and somebody says something harsh, and you're, and sh I think she says, excuse me, because she thinks it's the fishmonger. Um, and then the, the scene happens behind them, uh, which I really liked that. And there is a recurring theme of the priest who's uh, lost his faith. And we're introduced to that with the crucifixion reenactment, also something Anderson's done, revisited before, um, because he's having a nightmare about it. Um, and then he'd see, as you show him going to a doctor who's very, um, like, maybe you should just, uh, maybe there is no God, maybe you should just enjoy living your life. And then the best, to me, the best thing in the film is kind of the third amongst those two characters where <laughs> after a drunken, uh, depressing, uh, uh, what's it called? <laughs> um, he goes to uh, preach to his uh, sermon. After a very depressing sermon, he goes back to that doctor and uh, is like screaming, what do I do now? And the lady's like, we close in three minutes. And they forcibly have to push him out the door. I liked that. Um, to me, the title and this leaning into banality, I think this is about there are, there are things that happen to us in our lives that um, define ourselves, but in between that are all these long stretches of contemplation. And, you know, the, the, the Hitler component and the horrors of humanity are one thing, and, which is reminiscent of Hannah Arendt's, you know, um, banality of evil. But to me, this is almost Roy Anderson talking about the banality of banality. Well, I don't have anything else to say. Clearly. Um, there's, I, and I think another code in here, there's two students reading about the law of thermodynamics, um, how every, everything is energy and can't be destroyed. Uh, to me, I think is also uh, potentially a, an entry point in deciding what he's doing. The very final scene is a man out in the, a wasteland that can't start his car, to me, which is kind of what the film feels like as well. Okay. What would you give this film? You know, I don't know art, but I know what I like. That's a common quote, right? Uh, I didn't like this film, but I appreciate that someone might in the, under the right circumstances. So I guess I feel 50-50 about it, so I would just give it two and a half. Sure. I, I think that's fair. I think if there... Again, I don't think it's the best starting point for Anderson. I really suggest uh, looking at his trilogy. So if there's anything in here that kind of spoke to you as interesting, if you watch this film... That's not true. There are a couple interesting scenes. The, that I found interesting? I thought it was very dry. It is dry. <laughs> the, but listen to what I'm saying. If there was anything that spoke to you, I would definitely recommend checking out his trilogy, specifically... Um, well, who are you talking to? To me? If anything spoke to me? <laughs> <laughs> a pigeon set. You know, he's start, his first film was 1970's A Swedish Love Story, which is a very traditional narrative film. And he made a crime drama after that I've never seen. But I would really love to see Anderson kind of get away from the vignette sequence because that is what he's synonymous with. Um, anyway, uh, I would give it three out of five. Thank you. Bye.